Daniel Skelton. Hi, I'm Chris Salvatore. And I'm Rebecca Cochin, and you're listening to or watching. Testing, testing, testing. Watermelon cantaloupe, watermelon cantaloupe. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome everyone. to Gaming. Oh, that's not that was terrible, <laughs> Jesus. God, what's wrong? Can we try okay, that again? Okay, so it's Rebecca saying it, and then we... I'll say... You know what? Just I'll Hello, say it first. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. My name is Rebecca Cochin. Now you go. You, you, go. Oh. Hey, guys. I'm Daniel Skelton. Hi, I am Chris Salvatore. <laughs> okay, wow, this is that was terrible. That anyway, was, yeah, you're listening start. to Gamus. Okay. Guys, I'm going to be honest, I've maybe already had a little too much to drink. Maybe? Anyone else? Anyone Possibly else? a little bit too much and champagne little bit, in our mugs. Yeah, there's been a little too much vodka already, a little too much champagne. I haven't even had any champagne, but it's been too much already. Let's Both be honest. Both of these people need help, and I'm just trying to be a supportive friend. <laughs> Look how cute our mugs are. Lester made I'm them Lester. for us. Lester's amazing. Lester is... World renowned, renowned photographer. He is. I had a really exciting week last weekend, Chris. Was I there? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, okay, so last weekend I got invited to shoot um, a cameo. Oh, yes. this movie that you guys just did. Yes. How is the movie? Wait, tell me everything. Let me tell you a couple things about this movie. So it's called I House of Car. Siri, not right now. Siri, shut the Let me tell you a couple things about this movie. So it's called House of Karma. Okay. Um, it is a horror comedy. Yes. Uh, just being on the set, I got vibes of like Jennifer's body or something along those lines. Like I, I feel like I love Jennifer's body. Yes. It's really yeah. It's, it's really fun. And I had told Rebecca, I said I would do anything. I just want to be in a horror movie. I don't care what has to happen. You can chop my head off. Anything. Just let me be in it, please. And she let me have a little walk-on role. I would have given him a bigger role, but there's like mostly teenagers in this movie, so we had to play like a a waiter that's like training another one of the girls. I looked way too young to fit in with the teenagers is the problem, so. That was the problem. Um, The problem really was is he he didn't look quite, he couldn't play 17, but he also couldn't play someone to be like their teachers or something, because you don't look old enough to like play their teachers. So you had to play like an in-between. Okay, well, um, just to stand up for myself, I couldn't play 17 because I didn't shave that day. That's true. That is very, very true. You actually would probably look 17 if you You shaved. You probably could. One of the guys Stop. is 28 playing 17 in the yeah, movie. Yeah, I know. Seriously. Yeah. Anyway. Did you get blood on you? Am I allowed to ask? No, that we didn't spoiled? get any. It was, there weren't any kills in that scene. But there might have been someone set on fire. I'm not saying anything. <gasps> yeah. Maybe um, someone's dick gets burned off. I don't know. We'll have I to wait and see. Oh, but no, it was no. amazing to see Gosh. Rebecca in action because uh, Rebecca and Dante, her husband, just it's having known them both for so long and seeing and them we working both together directing. both directing and like seeing the look on her face how excited she was like at every shot and by the end of the day she was exhausted i'm sure like anyone but she was still she still had a smile on her face she was still hugging everyone and like being cheerful. totally it was so fun it was, were there moments where you were like wanting to pull your hair out and like needed- um yes that was the day that daniel shot was our longest day at this restaurant it was very very stressful we had a lot of pages that day but we did it and it was great and i love directing and i can't wait to do it again it was, it was really yeah it was oh really, really God. fun. The cast I can't wait just, to see The it. cast is just, like, amazing, too. It, I don't know. Just a really special cast, really special crew. I Thank you. Yeah, yeah. everyone is really talented. Byling's in it. Can't wait for everyone uh, to see it. Byling. Yeah, it's So really, when really... can we see it? Do you have a date or release date yet? Or well, it has to I'm go through sure, multiple? Well, I'm sure. Right now we're, like, starting post-production, but realistically it'll probably be released Halloween of 2023. Yes. because. Ooh. I know. It's just very, very exciting. All right. So we're going to get to our guest now. Like yes. This. I actually invited our guest tonight. Um, hmm. So I want you guys to kind of guess. So this is someone who is intertwined with all three of us. Um, he is a professor, a uh, creator, a uh, director, a producer, a writer. Uh, most of all, just he's just amazingly talented. Um, so do you guys have any guesses? I mean, that could be so many people. It's someone who we all know. It's Hugh Allen Broca, and he's coming in right now. It's Hugh Allen Broca! How are you? Hi! Happy New Year! Oh, Dan, this is the best New Year's gift ever. Well, I just figured. I'm so sorry, I'm not Brad Pitt. Who? <laughs> this better is better. Than Brad Pitt. This who is better, better to have on the podcast than the, the person who brought us all together? Right, oh the person gosh. that created this entire wacky world in which we are all now living in. Q. Allen Broca, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. They I love seeing you all still being friends and working together. Isn't that crazy? Stuff that's that's 
yeah. phenomenal. It We've, is very rare, for sure. We talked about that on our first, first episode, episode, where yeah. it was like, you know when you're on set and you're just like, oh, I love everyone, we're going to be best friends, everyone's exchanging phone numbers, Instagram, right. and then you like never talk, talk again, but again. like, yeah. we right. have, you know, it's been, what, 10 Ten years? Yeah, yeah, and it is Almost rare. 30, yeah. Wow. Almost thirty. <laughs> That's right. Thirty <laughs> years. Well, I mean, it's been like twenty like since the first one. I mean, because Emily and I are supposed it to has go been for also twenty. Yeah. It's getting can, close to twenty. Isn't can that crazy? Start, can I can I start with a question for you, Alan? Oh, of course. Did you um did you grow up with aspirations of being a filmmaker, writer, director? How did that start for you? Yes, I did. When I was a little kid, uh, when I first learned what a director was. Um, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I saw like a PBS documentary and oh, I didn't so realize cute. that there was someone who made all these movies that I loved. And um, that's what I knew I wanted to do. So I started making my own um, shows. I started directing wow. my own episodes of my favorite TV shows, which at the time were amazing stories and you can't do that on television. Yes. <laughs> Those were the documentaries that you started out watching? Those were the, no, they weren't documentaries. One was a sketch comedy show, and one was a right. science fiction. Yeah, you can't do that show. on television with um, Alanis that. Morissette. Yes, yes. Oh. Did you know that it was old school Nickelodeon? You can't do that on television. It's where the whole green slime thing came from. Oh, that what? before Double Dare. That's where it yeah. came from first, yeah. right? They would slime. They would green slime anyone no. who said I don't know. Oh, oh no. yeah, that's oh right. I remember that. Yeah, you can't do that on television. So. Okay, so when did you write your first like spec script or mm -hmm. feature or episodic script? I mean, was Eating Out, the original Eating Out movie, the first one that you wrote? Because I know you wrote it while you were at... I wrote, I wrote it while I was at CalArts in film school, but no, it wasn't the first. It was probably like the fifth or sixth script oh, that wow. I wrote. Okay. The first one I wrote was to get into film school. Uh, it was about um, some drag queens who try to pull off a heist. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah, Wait, I'm like, I mean, uh, honestly, so. like, that yeah. sounds fantastic. Yeah, I, I still think it would be fun to, to make. Um, it took place, in, you know, I wrote it in the early 90s, and it was about uh, a pair of best friend Filipino drag queens who um, are trying to become famous. <laughs> and one of them hooks up with a closeted soap star, and um, they accidentally get it on video somehow. And wow this closeted soap star tries to use it to blackmail the drag queen. Um, but the drag queen says, oh, well, I definitely want to be blackmailed. Please, wow. please, please let everyone see this. But then um, she's like, well, why don't I sell this to the press? Um, but no one is interested in this soap star. So they decide to launch this person's career. Well, maybe if we make him more famous, this tape will become this more valuable. This is great. This is a really good idea. <laughs> Wait, can we I, make this movie? I, like, I, just, I love this idea. I just want to point out, too, like, so you weren't afraid to tell the line even before you got into film school. Like, you, oh, yeah, I this mean, was the early 90s that I wrote. This. Like, I mean, weren't you a little nervous writing something with that kind of subject or content? Like, well, I might not get in. But, like, you kind of just went there. Oh uh, yeah, thank you. Um, no, I think that's just what I wanted to tell. Um, you know, honestly, I didn't. I knew I wanted to make films when I was a child, and I started by making my like copies of my favorite episodes of uh, my favorite TV shows. I make my own episodes right. of them. Um, I did the same thing with like I love this yeah. stuff. Yeah, but it wasn't until I was in college that uh, I saw John Waters, the, the movies of John mm -hmm. Waters, and I realized that films could literally be about anything. Mm. Like wow. that was something I never thought of. I thought they, there was a certain formula and a certain genre that they had to be, um, but they, they could be about anything and anyone. Yeah. And so I was the, my first feature script, I wanted to tell stories about me. So it was queer Filipinos. That's the so first cool. three scripts I wrote were, but none of them could get made. The first right. one that got made was, it was still queer, but it was like an all white gay boy, <laughs> gay boy movie. Right. Um, but yeah, so my first, my first three scripts were all centering queer Filipino young people wow. trying to figure out who they were when sure. you were in film school did you ever feel like professors or people would lead you into not writing about gay content were they ever like oh well that's never did they ever voice that sort of kind of like 
thing to you? No, not in film school. Film school was super supportive. Film okay. school was awesome. I went to Cal Arts. It's yeah. like they glue stuff onto film and then project it, and they're like, "That's my movie." It's like a bunch of dead bugs, and I'm projecting it. Yeah. So wow. they like do you do you? That was their yeah. that was great. their main thing there. Yeah. It was every single meeting after film school. After <laughs> film school, oh, no. So I would give people scripts like that, like that script, right. like my uh, first script out of film school. That I was really trying to sell was about a, a coming of age about a young Filipino boy um, realizing he was gay and then um, his mother kind of going on a road trip to find her her first love and wanting to rekindle. She tracks him down oh, and finds, a, finds out that, that um, they're a trans, a trans woman now. And How the three oh, that, of them form this new movies. Yeah. Like, you need no. to, you need I feel family. like you were the we right person <laughs> in the wrong time. It was a very wrong yeah. time. Mm. Well, no, but, but that's so interesting. It's like at that yeah. time, they, there weren't, of, like yeah, any gay movies, and now 2000s. look how things have changed from then to where we are now in pop now culture that, relevance. Now all of those scripts are like coming out on Netflix every week, right? right? right. And I'd like to point out that I believe, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were in a reality show, right, about gay men in I Hollywood. Was, yeah. Yes, so it was, it was called Gay Hollywood. Uh -huh. It was done by World of Wonder, the wonderful team that does RuPaul's Drag Race. That's and right. And they followed five gay men trying to make it in Hollywood. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, I and did not know this. Yeah, one, so I remember when this premiered it out. It ended fast. with me going off to make Eating, Eating Out my first feature. How did I not know and this? How did Where you, can I watch how it? How did you finally score your finally? Like you were so young. How did you score your first feature? Because that's something that people dream mm -hmm. about and never get to achieve. So. Well, I was doing the film festival circuit with short films that I made at Cal Arts and um, taking all these meetings. I was trying to make that one script I was telling you about the yeah. gay and Filipino guy, and all the all the meetings I would get would be like, "Well, why does he have to be gay and Filipino? Can you pick one oh, or wow. neither?" And, and literally in the same meetings, I would have execs say that and then say, "Write what you know." <laughs> like, okay, uh, okay, thanks <laughs> so okay. much. These so execs are always doing that. Know that about flop. straight white people. Yeah. That's, right. what, they, that's right. what they really Well, mean. and now that you know what you know about the film industry, you know that all these meetings are like primarily bullshit. Like the people who are in charge of the meeting, meetings don't usually know anything about film. Right. <laughs> right. Is that like really the case most of the time? You know, a lot like, of the time. Like, a lot yeah. of the time. A lot of the time. They're just in a good position. Because you have a new perspective now being, you know, kind of... Uh, a filmmaker and running and co-running a company so yes there's a lot of bullshit artists out there for sure as my father would say and yeah. now that now that we're all older yeah <laughs> now that we're not in our teens anymore it's weird going into these meetings and s some of these people are these execs and they're like so 22 yeah. right yeah <laughs> you're like let me just tell you Sometimes i watched it eating it, out yeah. under the covers when i was 11 years oh. old <laughs> <laughs> that's I get a lot of messages, I'm sure you two do as well. It's like that new generation mm -hmm. being like, oh, like, yeah. I, I saw the email. I'm just not used to being called daddy yet. <laughs> oh, you know? are you what? getting daddy now? I'm, get, I'm starting to get daddy. What? <laughs> you look so, like you're 25. <laughs> Stop it, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're kidding. ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's cool that you, it's amazing that you created, and, and not just with Eating Out, but with, you know, um, Rick and Steve, mm -hmm. with all of these other projects you've done. Boy Culture. Boy Culture, um, works that have really drawn the queer community closer together, and in a time when other people weren't really necessarily doing that not in, well, not in the same way you yeah know? the first eating out movie was really groundbreaking and what it did because there would not been like a movie like that that a lot of people had gone to see before i mentioned in the first episode that we filmed together that like i saw it at blockbuster and like and i would <laughs> always be in there with my parents what? and i'd like i it and be like but like I couldn't rent it, God forbid. You Could know? you imagine if you picked that up and said, "Mom, I'm going to be in part three. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, and four. She <laughs> probably would have had. I don't know, conniption. <laughs> uh, no, I can't. That would be amazing. <laughs> I love that. Well, because yeah. Dan was only allowed to watch what Little House on the, Little Prairie. House on the Prairie. I could watch anything like PG or if it G. was before G, definitely, <laughs> or if it was before you know like 1960. Wow, oh, <laughs> so, yeah. so many options. <laughs> Poor kid. But yeah, I remember seeing. I remember seeing the cover and just being like blown away, and I could not believe it was in a blockbuster. You know, so yeah. and then cut to I don't how many years later, and then. I saw my face in a blockbuster on the cover and 
my parents did too. So right, you know, and now blood pressure is oh, not even a thing anymore. I know. <laughs> All right, that's really sad. Answer. But no, it was it was cool though. It really was. I remember when um, the first movie came out, and we were at is it Frameline that's in San Francisco, the film mm-hmm. festival. And we had gone up there. I were you in the car with me with Emily? I can't remember I if like remember. we all went up together. I can't remember I don't either. I think I drove up there now. Okay, so like I had driven up with Emily, and I remember the day that it was playing um, at the Castro mm-hmm. in the Castro district. We were there was like a huge. There were lines of people around, like going on for blocks and blocks and blocks. And I was yeah. in the car with you. And we were like, what's going on? And then um, someone wow. we were with were like, oh, my God, they're all in line to see the Eating Out movie. And I remember you turned around to me because you were in the passenger seat. And you said, Rebecca, this is a really big deal. <laughs> oh and I remember gosh. being like, yeah, it really, it, was. It, it really, this is a really <laughs> big deal. And at the time, I was like, oh, whatever, you know, like, I'm 19. Like, of course, I'm going to be in a movie and it's doing really well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because so I had no way. So I was a dumb Cut child. Cut to you outside the Abbey <laughs> begging <laughs> to get in at Right, the I told him that I wasn't allowed to go to the after I party. it was going to be a bigger deal than that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think? I think it did catch on like that though because it definitely and it wasn't just in San Francisco and Los Angeles mm-hmm. like I, I was living in Oregon and then in Seattle and even in Seattle I remember guys being like oh have you guys seen Eating Out <laughs> like you know talking about that like why do you think it caught on the way it did I think because it it filled a void that that there was when I when I was growing up I wanted to see uh, I loved sex comedies like Meatballs and Porkies and American Pie right. yeah. anytime mm-hmm. Revenge of the Nerds anytime there was a an LGBTQ character in it, if there was, they were the most horrible, awful, hated thing that yeah. you could be. Like yeah. it, the most horrible it's thing so that could happen to a person is maybe they accidentally kiss a guy or something like that. So <laughs> you know, we were like this disgusting joke, and it kind of hurt yeah. to see yeah. that. But um, how could they? Ex- these movies were all about exploring sexuality, but um, they cut out like this gigantic chunk of sexuality, sexuality. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it was just about straight male sexuality right. right yeah and and specifically a straight male gaze too so it was like Correct. like they would be like literally raping people in these um, movies literally right? yeah yeah and yeah. you're like wow that's pretty disturbing so um but anyway I, I i did love these movies i loved that they were taboo and they were about sexuality and exploring that but i wanted one for us and that's kind of where it came from i wrote it as a joke in film school no in my way. screenwriting class i had written all my important queer Filipino boy stories that I wanted to write that were drama, but I wanted to do with something comedy. And we read pages every week. And a thought came to me, um, what if there was a scene where a straight guy had a gay experience, but it wasn't because he was closeted. It was just because it was a gay experience that happened. Like, how would that happen? And I could wow. make this cute straight guy in class read it, <laughs> read the scenes. <laughs> and so I read oh it just so that God, we could no read that phone sex scene in class. No in the first way, movie. really? Yeah, and everyone loved it. And so I was like, all right, well, let's write, we'll write pages every week and we'll make a whole feature. And that's where it came from. Did he keep reading the lines? Yeah, he loved it. He thought it was awesome. And okay, the wait, greatest you know compliment where he is was, now? Is he, he said, straight? I can see myself doing that. <laughs> oh, wow. I love that. Wow. So that was my goal, though, was to make that scene that a straight guy could actually see themselves doing that. Wow. Um, My toxic trait is I want his information. (laughs) Huh? Like the straight guy, like... (laughs) He sounds like he's open. For... Anyway, let's just. <laughs> well, I mean, what? half of the cast of the first two eating movie out movies are straight True. guys who are kind of yeah. open, right? Yeah. Are you still in touch with um, Marco and what was the the first guy's name? Ryan Carnes. Right. Yes. No, I mean, like occasionally. Yeah. In Instagram, like kind of how we right. are. Right. Like, uh, so sad. Uh, you know, like, kind of like uh, how we are. When I have a birthday, I'll send you. Hey, congratulations! <laughs> liking each other's things, kind of. Right. 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 Oh my god! But you know what? But I, I feel like that's connected. Oh shit! I'm spilling my drink. That's no. I was just about to say like, we had me and Dan. I think it was me and Dan eating out three. Mm-hmm. We had like one of those same moments that you had with Rebecca, like. You turned to us, and we were waiting in line. We turned the corner, and I remember, I think it was Glenn being like, these are all the people that are, you know, the director, all the people that are going to see your movie. And we were like, remember, like, so we, like, lit up, and you turned to us, and you said something very similar, and I'll always remember that moment. At the Sunset Five. Yeah. The theater in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. That was yeah, super, that was super fun. fun. But yeah. I was going to say, I think... Um, Everyone wants another eating out movie. So. I would love that. We need yes. to make it make it happen. Before we move on from that opening, though, I just want to say something about specifically the two of you. So, Eating Out Three came out in a time where it was still 
really hard for an actor to be out and queer and get work. And it was really hard. Now it seems like a, like everyone's out. Totally. But you, you two were like groundbreaking in that you were going to be leading this movie and being out and being comfortable. And I know it was not an easy decision for either of you to do that because it was both for both of you, it was like your first lead role in something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And you're like, this is going to define and set the tone for my career. This is a huge, what am I doing? Right. Um, and so I just wanted to thank you and make Aww. sure that... And, and tell you how much I respect you well, thank for, you. for making that thank choice you, and yes. making such a difference in so many people's lives. Yes, it's important that you were both out and mm-hmm. willing to talk about being yeah. out and starring in this movie. because am- yeah, It's know. been amazing. The first one, I wanted more out people in it, and people just were not out. Totally, yeah, at that, that time. with Jim Ferraros, but no one else in the cast. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. no one would have been openly. Or but by the time we got to yours, all of our leads were out. And I, f- I feel like you were kind of the pioneer for wanting to cast gay actors that are playing you know gay roles just to give them a chance Mm -hmm. you know because i remember those conversations we were all having during the casting process is like you know like what are you out like would you consider making this your you know Mm -hmm. like this thing and right and the warnings people would say oh you won't be able to work again if you do a gay movie is an openly gay actor never come but you know what to all those people now i have to say hey i live behind a dumpster and i'm no i'm just kidding (laughs) 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 that was a total joke and it's not funny um but i I think we both kind of felt the same way about like, I don't know. And then there was like this momentum that kind of was happening around the same time, like Glee came out. Right. And I I think we both got told, you know, you can only do certain kind of roles now. But Mm -hmm. um, especially like when I felt like because it's a sex comedy mm -hmm. and, you know, there's nudity and like, oh, you're going to show you know, a full frontal shot and scene, like, oh, now you're just right. going to be a porn star or whatever. Which now it's like everyone on Game of Thrones showed full frontal nudity, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's not a thing anymore. Right. But then it was, it was still, though, when we shot Eating Out 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what kind of bothered me is that I would try and explain it to people. It's like American Pie, kind of, but for gay people. Mm-hmm. I always say that, like, yeah. in my uh, explanation. Right, and people would be like, but there's a penis in it, so it's <laughs> got to be porn, right? And I'm like, I always. Mean, I don't know. Think about like Fast Times at Ridgemont High. We like Phoebe Cates, like them. oh my gosh, like beautiful <laughs> naked body. Yeah. And we don't think of it as a porn. We could think of it as a cult classic. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. To speak to that, also like present day, it's like happening all over again with like porn stars, which is sad because what do you mean? Yeah. it's just like you know we're talking oh people are making comments about is it porn oh that must be porn Mm -hmm. like porn porn is is bad bad thing right which i don't think and it's like just ingrained in our in our minds and when we speak even the word Mm -hmm. i feel like everyone has that it's bad it's bad but being on the other side of it being on OnlyFans, and doing that type of work you kind of see how you're cast it out again it's like a different level which is crazy because think of all the a-list celebrities that are on only fans right, right now like, you know what i mean like how is it even still? And, like, or something yeah well, right yeah. like how is it still a thing that has this taboo surrounding it when now like so many celebrities have only fans pages and i think it's cultural though i yeah. mean it's like we have trained people train people to be ashamed of sex and our bodies well in america everyone absolutely, like yes. you you're, you're sex phobic and you should hate your own body yes and those absolutely. are two and this brings both of these things together and that's how the brands make all the money you know? yeah correct that's how i mean every so many brands bank on the fact that we're self-conscious about ourselves and that mm-hmm. we'll continue to i mean oh my God, so they, much marketing i mean they really made it work for me <laughs> <You know>? same. <laughs> same but yeah it is it is very very interesting for sure yeah. that people I mean because they're obviously like in mainstream stuff people aren't having like penetration sex but there's like people are showing full frontal nudity all the time mm-hmm. and very graphic sex scenes and stuff like that mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's like it's, your, it's okay if you're an A-list celebrity showing full frontal but if you're not an A-list celebrity full frontal then it's like well it's kind of porny if you're not an A-list right. celebrity right. you know what I mean it's very and then I the connotation know, on the word porny, you know? Right. right. I mean, think about, like, how many Academy Award-winning actors and actresses have won Oscars doing full frontal nudity. But, mm-hmm. like, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. I think it's changing, though. I think nudity I is think it's a new going to coming. be just another part of yep. 
of a story and sex is just going to be another part of our of our life that yes is exciting and intimate and life-changing but um not dirty and so not- you yes. mean as like technology continues to like expand well, like yeah, we're going to be like, sharing more of that like before, part of ourselves in the early 2000s if someone had a naked picture like that was oh, a yeah, huge yeah. like yeah. Vanessa yeah. Hudgens remember now, that now like every single person yeah. in the world has nudes and it's just whether or not they end up getting leaked or something right for real I mean, and like, right. I think it's going that way with porn like bef- in the early 2000s we I shot a documentary series about porn actors and the way porn actors I, what, what was that called again <laughs> it was called Porno Valley and one, one quick story from that is I took one of the porn actresses I was following to Thanksgiving dinner with my Rebecca mom's. and her mom. Oh, my God. <laughs> she was 19. Your yes, oh, yes, at my studio Phyllis. apartment when 19. I was 19. And on meth. Yes, <laughs> this super so methy girl. Bless sweet. her. Sweet, and she is in oh. love with Rebecca. She thought she was She's so beautiful. Very She's oh. very sweet. She's very sweet. She was so sweet. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. I thought you were saying Rebecca was 19 and on meth. I was like, you're no, giving Rebecca a lot away here. Rebecca was 20 and on meth. But <laughs> no, okay. was That's right. Okay, so. So how was that Thanksgiving dinner? Was it interesting? It was great. We had a nice it time. It was really fun. It was a memorable, th- memorable Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> really? for sure. Honestly, that's the only thing. I, I don't even remember the food. Do you know where she I is now? I just remember us being at your apartment. Where? I don't, I don't know. Where is that girl now? Do we know? I don't know. You guys um, are horrible I friends. did look her up about <laughs> five or six years ago just to see yeah. if she had done porn for a while. And, and her name was still... Hmm. Um, showing up. So. Well, there you go. Oh. We have to bring up something that everyone always asks when they're talking about the eating out movies. I get this question at least <laughs> once a day on social media. People are asking me in eating out five, who is the dead body that I am burying? Yes. And, and what everyone. does that mean? I, I'm and- not kidding. I, I can't. I get asked so often, so, like randomly. Every day I get asked who the dead body is. So, so everyone knows the dead body was my husband Dante, who's sitting right over there. But I don't. Well, that was just a stunt double for the actual character. Though. Right. So do I don't you know who know that dead what body character to be. was. I absolutely do know who the character. <gasps> who? Was. Okay, yes. I have a theory. You do? Huh? You do? I want to hear your theory. Okay, my theory is: <laughs> was it supposed to be maybe? Um, Ryan Carnes' character? No, he already oh. died. No, oh, sorry. He died in the Ka- chair. Kyle. He died with Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, then. Oh, no. Oh, Kyle died in the chair? Yeah, they both Oxy. died. Dang it. Okay. They were on the bus, member, Or they were in the car the on the opening tour scene. Marco, Marco movie. Dapper, then. Oh, he's still alive. <laughs> in, the, in the EO universe. Is it someone <laughs> that... Can you tell us this? Is it someone that has been on... The eating out screen. Yeah, before. Is, it Gwen? is it Gwen? Is it Emily? New, oh, oh, it's a new character. It's a new character, but, um, but it's not 100. percent It's just an idea that I have that, mm. that, oh. that I want to explore and get wow. into. This is an exclusive. So it's a new character, yeah. but you've already killed them off. And I've already killed them. But off. we might find out about them Maybe. in a flashback. Yeah. Well, I mean, the body does the body does twitch, so <gasps> there may have. Oh, been. <laughs> they could come out of that bag. It's definitely yeah. eating out. They may not be dead. Six, <gasps> the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. No, it's nothing scary. It's just um, somebody who's very close to Tiffany's character, um, oh, but yeah. so close that you know Tiffany may want to kill them. It's, oh my god, <laughs> Tiffany! I, so I knew you were a cold blooded <laughs> murderer. No. Okay, wait. Speaking of nothing scary, mm-hmm. would you ever do a gay horror film? Absolutely. And if, you, if you did, what would it look like? Uh, I don't know. It, de- it would depend on the script, but I would absolutely do it. I probably wouldn't write one because I'm not that much into writing horror, oh, but I would okay. love to direct a horror. Uh, yeah? Horror. Can we yeah. do it, you guys? Because I really love horror and I really want to do another well, horror. Well, House you of could Karma... Have been in House of Karma. House of Karma is, it, it is a horror movie. There's a few comedic elements, but I would like to write a horror movie that has like more like, comedic elements. Oh, I thought you were going to say more horror. More, well, no, that's like a gay horror that has like some comedic elements. I would like to do a psychological one, though. Yeah. I I like comedy, but if I did a horror, I'd want it to be like really freaky and fucked up and mess with your whole perception of how you see society and the world around you and who you trust. Like, that's the kind of horror that I would Mm. Then you should write it. That would be funny. I want to write it. You need to find the right script. Like Barbie movie. Let's have a meeting about this (laughs) and we'll talk about eating But I want it to be legitimately creepy and make a commentary about who we are, how we treat LGBTQ people, how we treat each other, (laughs) and... um, just, Ooh, I don't know. I think it'd be that could be really, pre- really yeah, good. Yeah. You need Dark. to beat Ryan Murphy to the punch. <laughs> you need to do it before he does. I'm Ryan serious. Murphy don't we watch this really do. He's made everything. He's I already know. made everything. He's made all of television <laughs> so already. He's, he's probably already filmed it. <laughs> probably, yeah. Right. He's right yeah. now. He's already like wrapping it on post production. But honestly, I I love and respect him. And Me too. He's, he's doing so much that I wish that I could have done. I wanted to be a person who 
cast all LGBTQ actors all the time. I love so I, I love too, and I would love to hear from him sometime. <laughs> I know. Come on, Just Ryan Murphy. Um, um, and it's okay, never so too who late, are some you know? uh, LGBTQ plus creators uh-huh. that you um, admire? Or like who have inspired you other than John, John Waters? John Waters yeah. was, was number one, my, probably Which, the first person. Did you ever who, meet John Waters? No, I have not met him, but, I, but that is one of the reasons Mink, Mink, Mink is in... And Mink Stoll. Oh Mink Stoll from the Eating Out for, movies. For those of you who don't know, wow. Mink Stoll played Aunt in Helen that. in um, Eating Out 1. Is she in, in Eating one, Out th- 2, 3, 4, and 5. Right. She was uh, one of um, his frequent collaborators. Mm-hmm. I think, weren't they called the Wonderland or the Dream Players? Um, um, Dreamland? Is the Dreamland remember. Players. <laughs> the people who would frequently collab with John Waters. Well, well and John Waters that. has a new movie coming out soon, right? For well, the first he's going to shoot long- it. Oh, he's going to shoot yeah, it. He hasn't so shot he it yet. He wrote the book. And he's writing a, a movie based on oh, a book. Wow. Yes, and he hasn't directed a movie in a really long time, yeah, so this is going to be really wait. exciting. Me too. So what's I'm the a, book? Um, uh, oh, I should know. I, I forgot. I forgot and what it's it was sitting too. on my desk. Is it about? Do you know what it's about? about? Yeah, like, is there like a little like storyline you can give? Me I I should know this yeah. more, but I don't. But I do know that he he has a movie that's coming out. I'm very been, interested to know like his stuff well because I mean really like he hasn't made a movie since it's been like yeah. gay has hit the mainstream really you know yeah. what I mean it's going to be a whole different world out there when he promotes this movie the next time I want to meet him so yeah, bad yeah he's like uh, I don't know I feel like he's how old a- is John Waters he's probably in his right? early 70s I, I would guess. guess yeah early 70s maybe so late 60s. what's next for you what's next for me so yeah, um, I have a uh, Romantic comedy that I'll be shooting in the Philippines this year, <gasps> next year. Oh my god! Whoa. Starting tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. Lester is from the so Philippines. So you're finally oh, going to make fantastic. the Filipino rom com of your dreams. Finally, uh, one of them. So um, this is so exciting. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited. I did not write this, but I love the script. Oh my god, it was this written is so by exciting. Joanna Benica, uh, pr- being produced by Stephen Israel, a producer <gasps> that I work with. Oh, we know quite Stephen. Often. Oh my yeah. god, well. amazing! I want to produce this movie too. We want to go to the Philippines. Tell <laughs> them that we're a, in. It's a romantic comedy about a trans man who is Canadian now, but he was born and raised in a small vi- village in the Philippines that he kind of escaped uh, as a child. Uh, and he's trying to change the gender marker on his passport, and he does not want to confront anybody in his town. He doesn't want to deal with anything. Goes back to the Philippines with his girlfriend, and the idea is to sneak in, get the stamp on, on the birth certificate, so, and sneak out. But um, it, the COVID lockdown happens right during this and he's stuck in the philippines um and that that's the premise of the story so wow. he's stuck in the philippines oh, and does cool. eventually have to reconnect with everybody that he he did not want to but it's an uplifting feel-good comedy it's about I love him reconnecting this. With it sounds like it has touching. some dramatic yeah. elements yeah. falling in love with a country that he was afraid of yes. wow Which is really cool oh yeah. my god and that's so it. great that it's like in the Philippines. I'm so excited to That's be going gonna be there. That's going to be so like, fun. So beautiful. It is going to be gorgeous. I'll show you guys yeah. the lookbook afterwards. Oh, yes. Okay. I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, and we know, so we also know that we don't have a lot of details, but mm-hmm. we know that um, the Boy Culture series yes. was filmed. Yes. It filmed a sequel to Boy Culture. And it hasn't been released quite yet. It's not yet released. It's doing the film festival circuit. We are working on distribution, which will hope and hopefully happen in 2023. People, people all over <laughs> Twitter are like going off about boy culture they're uh-huh. like so excited for it i know so. i can't wait to see this yeah. movie because yeah. i remember well, when I've the seen first the trailer came out. we should put put the link for the trailer in yeah. the yeah. yeah for sure because if you sure. haven't seen the movie boy culture you should go watch that are you still yeah. raising funds for it no no oh. we're done with it okay. like we're just ready to distribute they, it yeah now. they already they made so everything. we did the so, film festival circuit it's six 15 minute episodes it plays like a, a movie it, a uh, 90 minute thing okay. and the same two characters uh, X and Andrew uh, Derek Magyar and Daryl Stevens um, t- 10 years after the fir- after the movie and wow. where their relationship is now so for people who haven't seen the original um, boy culture so we're following a couple that kind of stuck it out at the end of this movie and we're seeing where they are 10 years later right so, well they become a couple at the end of the, the original movie is about a hustler um, who eventually falls in love with his roommate Okay. Um, and it ends with them kissing and starting a relationship. Wow. The series picks up at the end of this relationship. Okay. Um, and X getting back into hustling and finding out that the sex work industry has changed quite a bit in the interceding time. Um, 
with apps. Since he's been out of it. Huh? Since he's been out of it. Huh? Yes, he's been out of it. Has, was any of this inspired by anything we went through or? About, about what? You and me? Huh? And no, I mean, not us. <laughs> Where is the question going? I'm just saying, like, you know, like, what, inspired, what inspired right. the original boy culture for you? Oh, the original boy culture was based on a book. Oh. Uh, it was a best selling novel called Boy Culture uh, by I had no idea. Matthew Rettenmond, an amazing writer. And oh. we wrote the series together. So the book I just adapted. Oh, that's so Did cool. you know that? That's yeah. so cool. I, well, I didn't know about that because Emily was in boy culture. Oh. I remember she cut off cut off her hair and dyed it pink cut for her that. Hair and dyed cool. it. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh my god. It looked really okay. cute though. It did. She looked really cute with it like that. I'm just so amazed that like the, here's yet again another example of how you broke the barrier at a time before it's time. You know, mm-hmm. like you made a girl dye her hair pink. <laughs> That's no, right. The, the, <laughs> the thing for boy culture that was um, a step for me and uh, a change for me was after making the first Eating Out movie, um, one of the things that I was not happy about was that I none of my main characters were people of color. And here I was, a, direct, a queer director of color, so now you becoming part to... of this problem of not having representation of mm. my own self. And so uh, when I got Boy Culture, the book, again, was was all white. And I was like, I can't ever do that again. Uh, I didn't know that's what the original the book was all white characters. Mm-hmm. And so, so you, with the writer, decided to change? No, <laughs> oh. on my own. Wow. So I, uh, the, the writer wasn't, wasn't involved. So I, Oh, I, he was not even involved. So no, you... no, we, we, uh, we optioned it. So it was completely I see. separate. Um, yeah. And that was, that was a, f- uh, a, a fight and a struggle. But... Um, um, and when did it come out? It came out... 2006. See, like, to have black, gay culture represented in that way. Like, at mm-hmm. that time still, you know? Like, that's yeah. that was hard to do, so... So now, yeah. just, we tell some more stories. Uh, yeah. we, wanna, we wanna tell more stories. Yeah. We wanna yes. get eating out okay, the I have a me. question. I have a question. Okay, so... I have two questions. So, which of the movies is your least favorite? And I think I know which one it is. Out of all the Eating Out movies? Yes. Oh. Well, I mean, they all are for different reasons. They're all They're your least favorite? Yes, for like different in different reasons? categories. So, the first one, <laughs> the first one is my least favorite That's not in what some I'm ways. To hear. <laughs> like, okay. Because I just think it looks <laughs> awful, right? Okay. You think the first one looks um, awful? The first one looks horrible. It looks really so, bad. Yeah, so, like, the night scenes are terrible. Please. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, but it holds a really special place in my heart because it's the first thing I did. Of course, of course, Didn't know what I was doing at all. Um, But um, yeah, I mean, quality-wise, it definitely is the ugliest looking one. (laughs) um, But I mean, my favorite is the second one. I think it has... um, great comic timing it, it looks expensive i like what, yeah what, i think yeah. Yeah. philip philip bartell directed that one i think he just did a, a wonderful job um and then probably drama camp is one of my other favorites because i just loved <laughs> yeah that whole idea of being a in a one. drama camp yeah. and i had dick dicky it's such a good time with you all yeah making it fun. and just being there it felt like being at a trauma camp somehow. Oh my god! It that did. experience was actually pretty amazing. I'll and never just forget it. all those people, mm-hmm. everyone involved with it. Like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I had such an amazing time. So that's probably one of my favorites. I don't know. Yeah, I love that. What are, I, what are your least favorites? I want to hear from and you who've been in all of them. Well, I mean, I wasn't really in four and five. I just had little cameos in four and <laughs> that five. Counts. That does that does count. So I guess I mean I guess my least favorite would be four only because I guess that's like the least memorable of all the things that I've but done you, probably you stuck your fist down your throat I know that's how many crazy things <laughs> Tiffany has done that's the least memorable <laughs> out of everything what about you I think my okay my favorite to film was number five just because mm-hmm. I, we had so much fun being out in the desert in Palm Springs and oh but you weren't really there I wasn't there so um, like um, um that but four way Jeff, kiss is pretty amazing it's like yeah phenomenal <laughs> and yeah it was just a, it was just fun and then um, I think my favorite to watch like if I like had to show someone if I had to pick one to show someone I would probably choose three and honestly I would say like 40% of that is besides your amazing direction I is didn't... your performance because you're so so, so funny. freaking hilarious you are I yeah. would say three is my favorite 
as well. It was just so magical. Like, it was, like, my first big thing, and I was, like... I remember I would stay on days that I wasn't even in scenes just to, like, hang you out to be with there. everyone. Right. Yeah. Um, and also, like, R.I.P. Leslie Jordan. Like, that was just, like, such an iconic, like... He was a moment to meet him and work with him and like hear his input and his mentorship like just meant so much to me you know I know it's such a crazy thing because especially in the last couple of years he's just been everywhere in yeah. pop culture yeah. he kind of blew up I on know, TikTok I know I know mm -hmm. and just was... to see his comedy and like remember like I don't know if you guys remember but I remember him coming to set and being like I always have a separate bag for my Emmy <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is my Emmy bag <laughs> yes yeah. why don't we get to a call from our fans yeah. Right? We have calls. Oh. Callers from our fans. This is uh, Portland, Oregon. Let's see who it's, this is. Okay. Hi. I'm just calling because I'm such a huge fan. I'm really excited for your podcast. But I have just one question. I've been wondering for, for years, and it's been kind of burning at me, and I just I have to know. And Whatever happened to Michael, Like I, just, I would really be very interested did he did he die i don't i just was it an overdose i don't know i just i would love to know and i appreciate it thank you so much love you guys that's that a hard heavy, question yeah. that's heavy um so he was asking about michael ear walker who started eating out three along with us and he did sadly pass away um, I don't know if it's our place to talk about, you know, his passing, but he is no longer with us and he was a beautiful, funny person and he was loved and he is definitely missed all the time. And I am very sad for everyone that left him that he's no longer here. So that is, that is sadly what happened, yeah. but he was a funny, funny handsome man and we have a lot of funny memories with him remember how he was like cast like last minute he too was. right he saved our ass yeah. so we yeah. had cast someone else in the role that um dropped out last was, minute yeah he dropped out last minute kind of got cold feet and we were uh, stuck and we were like are we going to make the movie or not and, and i was dating you, michael at the time and I remember you guys started before. dating like during filming. You I started breathing. You just broke up. Oh. Well, they were like, did we break? Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought it, he was like an well, ex. Yeah, I was told that oh, you were an ex. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I was staying with him. Yeah. That's oh. what it was. And I remember Glenn being like, we're panicking, like yada yada. We need someone. And Michael, I was like, why don't you just read some of these lines or whatever? And he like put on that like, John. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, yeah, my yeah. I was like. Oh my god. <laughs> and I remember we sent some videos to um, Glenn and you, and that's just amazing how it that all came amazing. together. Yeah. Yep. I have to say, he so. He slept his way to the top. Slept his top. way <laughs> um, to the eating house. Really yep. When I first met him, I just was not a fan. <laughs> He's probably he but laughing so hard right now. We, Love you, I, I, like, I just. Michael and I became so close, and I grew to love him so much, and I just think that he was such a bright light, and he's definitely, he's missed a lot, mm -hmm. definitely. definitely. Yes, he's mm -hmm. definitely missed a lot. He was a light. Number two from the bottom is a lighter question. A lot of people yeah, thank are you. eating out in the past. I know. It's um, really yes. make me tear up. Yeah, I already did cry. Yeah. I really miss him, you guys. I know. I know, he should be here. Okay, I, so... Okay, yeah. Let's, on a lighter note. <laughs> on a lighter note. Hi, I'm calling because my date best friend just introduced me to these movies, and I really love them. Um, just all the drama in them, which made me wonder, was there any real-life drama during filming? Was there any real-life drama during filming? Is that what um, Was there real-life drama during filming? Um, I mean, I feel like for me, there was. But... Any movie on that budget, there's really there's, drama. Yes, yeah. any low yes, budget there movie. Yes, there was drama. There was drama. We really touched on it on our first episode. Yeah, oh, there was drama. What? Oh my god, I missed it. There was drama, but we all were professional, and you know, everything worked out. Yeah, there wasn't too much. There was you all were like kinds the least problematic. Probably. Thank you. Yeah. Probably, I probably was. I mean, because, yeah, I was always just like off in a You were always just like doing lines. your own thing, and Chris and I were like, please spray paint more abs on me. Yeah, oh my God. totally. What the hell? My we, tan. Like, who? why didn't anyone stop me? Remember Ricky, the, <laughs> the, 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 the makeup artist who was doing the spray thing? Yeah. 
He he literally made me as dark as him. Yeah, and then yeah. and then he told me, sweetheart, there's only so much I can do with you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, he said that to you. It's fine. Guys. How much did these movies mess with both of your self images? A lot. A lot. <laughs> For you? I mean, they yeah. had to. It's For be you? Tough. Yeah. But being in these movies, you were like the like hunks. So I was like, like nobody would ever want to be with ugly Casey. <laughs> like literally, I I'm before I did these these movies. I swear, I lived in. I was no, going to college in Seattle. I was going to college so in dumb. Seattle, and I was like, wow, I'm like pretty good looking, you know. And then I did these movies, and I was like. No one will ever love me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, it wasn't no. that bad. I think the like the end emotional feeling is similar, but we just got there different ways. I like. I feel like for me, like it's just. It was hard being like so sexy. No, like <laughs> you have to take yourself out of yourself right now. Sorry. Think of it from my perspective. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm this sorry. isn't about you. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. No, Jeez. I. I can't imagine how it must have felt. <laughs> no, I'm listening. People were like rating all of the eating out actors and saying people who was were rating the hottest my the dick size. Yeah. I was totally. I showed my dick in the movie, Dan. Did um, you? Chris, remember Mary Fuck Kill? Everyone said I would kill Daniel Skelton. <laughs> I would run him over with a car. Who said that? Everyone. <laughs> It's no, but true. what was I was trying Someone to say? Someone Mary fuck kill between who? Me, Chris, Salvatore, and Michael My- Walker on <laughs> this WeHo website. And you were yes. the kill? Oh, no. And I was like, maybe people Wait. will want to marry me. And it was what like, was the thing they 95% you that- want Daniel Skelton killed. <laughs> 95. That's a high percentage, Dan. <laughs> Wait, what was the thing Wait. they called you? A toothy irritant or uh, something? They called, well, first they called me a, a, oh a hood rat. What? Why are you a hood rat? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I was a hood, I was a hood rat, and then a toothy irritant who should never appear on camera again. Oh my God. <laughs> but you know what? I guess who what? had the last laugh? Everybody. <laughs> we got this some awful reviews right here. Yeah. for people who would say things Humanity personal. Is so mean. Why I think for so me mean? it was like, oh, like, okay, like, yeah, like he is Zach or whatever. He's supposed to be hot and hunky, but like he can't act or like, I internalize that even now even now with only fans it's like am i only just the outside yes do people <laughs> ever- <laughs> honestly i would take just the outside to like a meryl streep inside on in today's society well i'm just saying in today's society meryl streep inside what like, does that mean like meryl streep's talent versus um like i don't know some hunky actors. Chris's people. looks. Yes. Like, uh, actually, never mind. I'd rather be Meryl Streep. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I do think that looks can take you really far. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely... That, that, that made my husband leave the room because he's laughing so hard. There's definitely some truth to that, but it's like you feel like you're not worth anything other than that. And that has really affected my self-esteem over the years. I'm, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I'm sorry. So it's a lot of like inner work and like being like, no, I am valuable on the inside. You know? I want to talk about that in the in eating out six. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things that one of the things I wonder about the entire series is just like, so well, it's great for us to see ourselves. How many people did this really fuck up? Like by putting up boys that I thought were so hot. You know, um, well, apparently the answer is both stories. of these two, at least. <laughs> well, not just the people in it, but <laughs> no, but honestly, people like, watching it. I'm only on six pe- medications. So people are watching it and looking at you <laughs> and thinking, I want to look like Chris someday. Like thousands of people, eat, and Dan too, both of you. Um, and then you two don't feel, don't recognize it about but, yourselves. Right. But but also it's it's kind of an interesting change because. So we did that movie in our very early 20s, and mm-hmm. then you age, and like you start looking different, you know? No, of course, and then you feel like you have to maybe keep always up with, look, like, keep like, up I, with I don't think I should whatever. be like 135 pounds anymore. It's mm-hmm. like a 30, I mean, 
27 year old man mm. <laughs> right. don't you don't you like doesn't it feel different now when you hear people say oh she hasn't aged well about an actress or oh something? my god like now it's just like oh. are you yeah. kidding me absolutely yeah. especially Probably. because like someone could say that just if you get like when you're in your 30s if you just get one bad night of sleep <laughs> like, right it's over yeah eat All one right. hamburger we're getting a lot of hand signals from our do we want to do uh, we need to wrap the fuck up do we want to do the uh, 10 questions for Alan real quick yes we're gonna oh. do 10 quick 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 yes Okay. Quick, quick, uh, quick. Like I have to answer them quickly. You have to hold well, no. Answer. You have to talk to the microphone. Yes. Oh, no, I keep not doing that. Okay. I'm. I'm you just have to gonna. Answer them very, no, you don't have to answer them quickly. You just All have right. to answer them. Yeah. Top or bottom? Or bottom. <gasps> Both. Oh. Lu- Louis Vuitton or Louis Vuitton? Uh, Louis Vuitton. Your favorite smell? Oh. Um, I don't know. That's I a know. Good question. Um, what is it? I feel like it's sweat. Your favorite smell? That's hot. Is I was sweat? thinking more like cinnamon rolls, but I'll take sweat. <laughs> <laughs> a man musk. Man sweat? Um, yeah. <laughs> if, if you could be any Gross. other profession, what would it be? I'm interested to know this one. Oh, any other profession? I don't know. Um, I know. What? No. Wow. Just <laughs> Damn like, all. If, would the talent come with it? Because I would love to be a singer, but I can't sing. That would be oh, awesome. Yeah, no, or no, any no. kind of. Any in a band, I would love yeah. to play. Oh, okay. Oh, Aww, that's a good one. Do you like red or black licorice or both? Ugh, I hate black licorice. I love red licorice. Okay. Mm. Your favorite gay icon? Oh, you answered this right, John Waters. Did I? Oh, yeah, John Waters is definitely mm. one of them. Can for we sure. get like a female too? A female me. Uh, queer icon. Um, Obviously me. Yeah, Rebecca Koch. Besides, Besides her. Thank you. you can't say that to every guest. I can't. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> You can't see, but <laughs> Margaret Cho is a close second, though. Who? Margaret Cho would be my Margaret close second. Margaret Cho. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, you should get her for Eating Out 6. I would love that. That'd be um, awesome. Yeah. Your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Um, well, right now, it's Booksmart. I watch that a lot. Oh. But of all time, oh, cool. I don't know. I, I I like um, I like M by Fritz Lang. Mm. It's really mm. cool and creepy looking. And yeah. I love the I love creepy. framing in that. Uh, Barbara Streisand or Cher? Oh, a Cher. Gaga or Madonna? Um, like, um, <laughs> there are di- different points in my life. Right, right now, I guess it'd be Gaga, mm. but I was all about Madonna through 2005 or six. Right? Yeah. Bob or Monet? Um, probably Bob. Oh man, everyone says Bob. Monet's gonna be so upset. Can I Monet. just throw in one she more? She will probably never come on our show. <laughs> no. Can I throw in one more? Christina what? or Brittany? Um, Brittany. Love that. <laughs> right answer. Right. right answer. Before we go, I have a surprise for all of you. <gasps> and all of you. What? Um, I found the original script that I used from Eating Out 3. Aww. And it has like all oh my, my notes and stuff and my highlighted lines and everything. That's so and my, cute. Like, intentions oh my and everything. So what I want us to do is I want us all to sign it and then we'll like put it on auction and give it to charity I or something. I love that idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. Isn't that cute? Do you have your... Look at this. So Your objectives are in here. Yes, oh, like dismissing. Oh my gosh! Like that's adorable. So I funny. love that. More. Do-, do you have an objective for when they're doing the lap dance? <laughs> oh my god! Is this because those were actually right. kind of complicated? Yes, so that oh is very god, true. Is All right, you guys, we have to wrap this up. We are at the end of our hour. Ch- uh, follow us on YouTube. Follow us on all of our social media sites. I'm looking at you. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on all our social media sites. Subscribe. Like. All that stuff. And where can we find Alan on social media? Uh, Alan Broca. At Alan Broca on Instagram. And mostly. it's A-L-L-A-N. Yes. Mm, Don't fuck important. it up. Don't fuck it up, everyone. Yes. All right. Until next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank you so much. It feels so good. Yay. Thank you so much.